Good evening. All right, we're the Smiths from um, the Rock Church in Plute, Texas. And um, it's our privilege today to be able to be a part of uh, honoring Sean Whaley, uh, our dearest friend, um, this day. Thank you, uh, Bishop Wright, for inviting us to be a part of this. Thanks. And um, we want to um, let uh, Sister Susan and Christopher know that our heartfelt uh, sorrow for for you and for the family. And our love and prayers. And our grandchildren and all of them. But we wanted to share about how special um, Sean was to us. A very loving, very loving friend. Um, we have him, had him many, many times come to our church um, to be a part of our services. But a lot of times we didn't even have him speak at our church. Um, but he would speak to our leadership and 90% right. of the time he, we, we'd spend a time in our home with 30 to 35 or 40 of our leadership and spend three days or several hours each day, um, him being able to minister to our leadership. It was kind of a, a funny thing that we would do is, uh, most of our leadership, um, has been affected by Brother Sean Whaley for many, many years. But some of you might laugh with this, but this was one of the most famous things in my house <laughs> when Brother Sean Whaley was there. Right. Um, I had to go to Sam's um, before he would come and <laughs> after he would come, and I'd stock up on tissues because even the grown strongest men that we had right. would usually go through minimum of one box almost <laughs> per day. Right. Um, that means that his ministry that God gave him and shared with us was very effective. Yes. Um, I think many, many times if it wasn't um, that God given Brother Whaley to us or to me that um, I don't know where I would have been at in the gospel. Um, I remember the old manifest, the very the beginning of the manifest. Uh, I was very blessed to be a part of those. And um, I can't remember if it was the second or third or fourth one. Um, it was the first one I was there, but it was, uh, I met Brother Whaley, met very many, quite a few people, but I'm a little bit um, um, more awkward, I guess, than other people. And when he approached me and started talking to me, my first thoughts in my mind was, what's your gamut, buddy? Um, what, what are you about? Um, didn't trust a whole lot of people. Um, soon, uh, through his conversation and through building a relationship or friendship, I knew he was um, not out to try to get something from me, but he was actually doing the will of God mm -hmm. and um, speaking to me. My wife has a kind of a funny illustration about, I, I guess, um, Brother Whaley always told me, he said I was the, uh, the long project for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I do know what that means. Um, but we spent a lot of hours together, um, not just there, but even on the phone. Yes. Uh, many times we talk on the phone. Sometimes we just talked right. about like brothers. When we, he was just a little bit younger than my older brother. Uh, my older brother's seven years older than I am. I think he's 67, 68. If I remember right, brother Sean's 66. And um, I always told him he was my older brother. And, right. He's um, like a brother. Yeah. Absolutely. And you didn't have any brothers except for no. you know, my he, brothers now. But. He called me baby sis too, which uh, tickled me to no end because I had a brother then. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And um, But through that process, we talked a lot of, about a lot of things. We cried together, um, laughed together. One of the unique things, and he mentioned about me also, and I with, with him, um, he never judged me 
mm-hmm. for how I talked to him. Unconditional uh, love. And how I felt. And I never judged him for um, how he felt might, might have felt that day. And um, uh, there's a big gap in my heart, in my life, um, without him. And I just want the family to know how much he really meant to me. Um, not just spiritually, but as a friend. Um, probably the most impacted man that I know has impacted the church in Youngstown, Ohio, where I pastored when I first met him. And then the last 16 years here at the Rock Church, I was a senior pastor for many years, and now I'm the bishop here. Uh, but he impacted both those congregations, those churches, and many ministers that came through there and was a part of there. Probably the most impactful um, minister that we had ever come. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal um, man of God. Yeah, he's, honest. He's used prophetically and yeah. teaching and training and always moved in the spirit. Yeah. I remember one time he got to get up preach and he had a showed me his notes. I think he had just four or five little notes on there. And he told me, he said, I'm only reading a scripture to help those that feel like I need to have a scripture. And um, he said, when he got up there, it just was immediate ministry and went forth. And remember one time we had a leadership meeting and before it was all said and done, there were um, groups just um, moving in the spirit of God all around um, that particular session that we had, that happened all the time. But Every time he was part, uh, it was a phenomenal move of God. No production. No, just um, pure ministry. Just pure ministry. Huh. Um, never made it a um, um, business-like thing. It was just yeah. whatever God so be. And I, I, at the beginning, I didn't understand. And, um, you know, but later on, I when I realized that this was greater than um, what a church service was, as, as many times, like I said, we just did it out of our home with our leadership, and he did minister to our people on, on, on a Sunday, but it was a lot of times deeper um, for us. And we just put our blue jeans on, literally put our blue jeans on, and um, put our shirts on and, and see what God wanted us to do. It didn't matter how messy to end up becoming right or how messed up our hair was which <laughs> sean's hair hardly ever got messed up a few times i laid hands on him um, <laughs> but um, um loved him very very much um right. to the rights i want to mention t- to all the rights also um bishop and sister Wright, and yes. of course joel and katie and david and angie i I am um, very, very sorry for your loss, and I know that you've loved him um, much. And um, the Antioch Church, um, wow, you you got a jewel that's going to be gone for what God's always provided for you. And um, I'm very thankful for Antioch, and I'm very thankful for the ministers and the ministry that has come there from there. Um, we've used many, many of you, um, Brother you, um, D- David and Joel Wright, they've all been uh, in our church services and preached for us. And Sister Cher. Sister Cher and Dane Cher. Yes. Um, this very, very um, church has been very, very instrumental, but I, I do have to say that. Um, the most effective one for me, for me, um, during these years uh, it, that has helped me um, has been um, Brother Sean. I remember uh, one time we were there, um, he took me and a few guys that came with me from Ohio at that time. I can't remember if it was his dad's boat or his boat. and We went on to Chesapeake Bay, I believe it was, and and um, it wasn't too, too long before we actually became even very close. And I just remember going out and just being able to relax 
and enjoy and let God have his way. Um, I remember one time we were at a manifest and um, I didn't know him real good at that point. And I uh, remember I'd been looking for my husband everywhere and couldn't find him. And I was asking, have you seen, have you seen my husband? You see my husband? And I remember Brother Whaley coming out of his office and uh, he said, he looked at me and he goes, sis, you're going to have a new husband. And uh, I was, I was kind of like perplexed a little bit and come to find out they had been through one of their little sessions together and five hours later (laughs) and uh it was it was wonderful it was life-changing um remember one time we were traveling in the car and we had just got done with service and i i the lord had used me that morning to minister and and every time that would happen before because of my shame a lot of times i would um have these voices that would come the enemy would come and try to attack me and i remember in the car I asked him, I said, what is that right there that I'm feeling? And he was able to, as if he was looking at the very thing that I was was talking about, he was able, the Lord through him was able to, to tell me what it was, minister to it, and I received uh, my deliverance that day from that voice that had always plagued me after I, the Lord would use me in ministry. And so I'm, I'm so thankful for that. Amen. Ministered a lot to my son, um, and even though my son's 34 and um, I have a grandson and he lives in Mississippi, there's even up to the point of um, Brother Whaley's death, uh, he still would minister to my son also. That always meant a lot to me. I, I know Antioch that a lot of times we don't know who we actually have in our church. Um, but I want to tell you, you truly had a very precious uh, man of God. Uh, loved his wife. Yes. Um, Susan, he loved you so much. We talked about that at times. He loved his his son, yeah. Christopher. And I remember, I don't know, Christopher, you remember this or not, but it was years and years and years ago when we met. Your Your children were very, very small. And um, I know he loved his grandchildren and how he talked and would just brag about them. But Antioch, you you have to know um, what he accomplished in the kingdom of God. And a lot of times we um, want to think about the pulpit and we want to think about the conferences or whatever and we say oh what a great man and and that's true but sometimes it um the things that you don't see um you don't might not even understand the accomplishments this man has done in the kingdom of god without anybody um knowing what he has done it was just between him and God. And a lot of times uh, my wife and I or our church benefited from that. So many times. And I know that we're not the only ones speaking today um, in, in place or, or for Brother Whaley. You're going to find out if you haven't already heard <clears throat> the effect that he's had even worldwide. And it's going to be amazing the day that when we get to um, come to heaven together, that we're actually going to be able to see um, some of the men that we rub shoulders with, some of the women that we rub shoulders with, what they accomplished in the kingdom of God.